hidden benefits of the Ford Tesla deal. Yeah, what the Ford? I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. And uh, yeah, by the way, uh, the rejects from this pile of AI will be shown at the end. So it's wild. So yeah, I'm sure you have heard that uh, Ford and Tesla announced a partnership by which Ford will be able to use the supercharger network. And how has the market reacted? Well, Tesla's done all right. Nice little bump there. Ford has done all right. Nice little bump there. <laughs> everybody's, everybody's happy. Everybody liked that. Well, not everybody. Yahoo Finance doesn't quite get it. Oh, this is the news Tesla owners have been dreading. Really? Uh, this article is pretty terrible. This move helps Tesla qualify for a share of billions of federal dollars on offer to improve the experience of charging. Yeah, Tesla already opted out of that. So I'm just going to stop there because this is terrible. And this link will not be in the description. Ford will use Tesla EV charging, but that's only part of the story. So I'm trying to dig deeper. It's kind of what I got to do. What are some of the benefits? What is... Uh, what does Tesla get out of it? Well, we know what Ford gets out of it. They get access to the most reliable charging network that there is. It's the biggest in the U.S. and it's the most reliable. And it's fun because Jim Farley's been on uh, the news shows explaining that um, it's great because Ford, the Blue Oval charging network, is the second biggest already, and this will give Ford access to the first largest and second largest charging networks. You guys haven't heard of Blue Oval? The Blue Oval charging network? So this is kind of a neat, neat little benefit here. Ford's adoption of Tesla's charging standard could change the EV charging landscape. The idea is we got to standardize. We have to. In Europe, they did it uh, by force. Uh, rather than letting the best one work, they just decided, no, nah, we're just going to use CCS, even though it's clunky and expensive and not great. By the way, this picture was posted by Ford. And yeah, they occluded the Tesla logo a little bit in favor of the Ford logo in the middle. Really a, a poorly composed photo all around. But that's what uh, Chris Farley's cousin does. So what is the Blue Oval Network? Well, it's huge, right? I mean, you guys have heard of it. Really what it is is Electrify America, EVgo, and ChargePoint. So when they say we have the second biggest network, what they mean is we have three networks which combine to still be smaller than the supercharger network. So what does Ford get? They get a couple things. They get access to it. They get a selling point. Chris Farley's cousin even said, I don't like the fact that on my road trip, we had to go to second rate locations and use second rate chargers. Ford also gets to keep their data. And that's a big one. Ford doesn't want their customers to have to use the Tesla app to make their payments and do their billing and all that. They want to hang on to that data. And Tesla said, absolutely, we'll give you an API so that you can pipe it through that way and keep your data. I mean, we'll also keep it. But you can keep it too, so that's nice. That's something. It's better than nothing, man, and this is a good deal. And if this does become the standard, which it should, at this point, the odds of the government stepping in and saying, nope, no more NACS, it all has to be CCS, goes way down. Because two of the biggest EV sellers in the country, I mean, Ford is also on the list, it's a very short list, are going to be using it. Electrify America has 839 total charging locations with 3,700 individual charging points. Now, this is out of date, of course. Everything always is, all the time. But this isn't that far out. January. Electrify America is that small still. 3,700 handles. Several of which, I have it on good authority, work. How many EV chargers are there? Okay, so ChargePoint is the largest. 27,000 stations with 50,000 individual charging ports. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, these are... Hmm. Yeah, I find that... <laughs> most charge points are level two. So these are destination chargers. So 
If we're going to include destination chargers, come on. And then we've got EVGO, 850 fast charging stations in more than 60 metros. What I'm saying is these are not, not the hugest, not the most robust networks. So what I'm hoping this means with Ford selling the Lightning and with Tesla selling the upcoming Cybertruck, that we will finally see pull through stations for trucks with trailers. I still don't recommend a big heavy trailer, but there are people who will do it and there are people who have to do it. And it's a real hassle. You don't want to unhook every time. Pull through charging, the revolution that must happen for EV trucks to succeed, agree. And I think it's crazy that it's taking so long, but it takes time. And having narrow pull throughs, so not like this, but closer together, you always risk the idiot factor of somebody clipping the chargers with their trailer. It will happen. I'm sure it already has. Here's an example of a good way to charge while, tr while having a trailer. Hmm. That doesn't seem ideal. Doesn't seem ideal at all. At least this guy didn't have to unhook. All he had to do was block two and a half spots. Three, two and a half. There's a curb here. So that's not great. This lightning is used on a, on, a, on a farm. It's a farm truck. This charger you can just pull up next to. It's a one stall, eh, maybe two. Mm, looks like one, that's a one stall. So that's not super great, but it's better than <laughs> It's better than unhooking your trailer every single time. Tesla is building one of the largest supercharger stations in the Mojave Desert. Look at that, a bunch of pull-throughs. Boy, I don't know how comfortable I would feel with some guy from my office who never hauls a trailer trying to pull a trailer through that skinny little spot. It's a hundred stall. One of the world's largest hundred stalls. That's pretty good. And what we saw yesterday, we, saw, we learned that Tesla's opening superchargers stations at a rate of one every 13 hours globally. And I know there are people who love to complain, well, they don't have one where I live. Yeah, that sucks. You should tweet to Elon about that. I've never had success doing that, but uh, some people have. It's worth consideration at least and yeah california super saturated the drive out to las vegas not too bad <sighs> so let's look at their market caps ev go it's worth a billion it has been worth four billion but uh, it's worth a billion is it really probably i would not invest in it market cap of charge point three billion down from its peak of almost 11 Charge point, would I invest? Mm, no, nope, still no. And Electrify America is a little harder to, to pin down because it does not, it is not traded separately. It is not its own company at this time. I saw a number of about 3 billion, I think. And I think I saw that the supercharger network, according to Barron's, would be like 30 billion. I don't remember now. It doesn't matter. The idea is this is, it's still the Wild West. It's still in the land grab phase. There's still a lot to go. But getting in on this without having to build it yourself is good. Now, why not just use the magic dock? And I guess as, as boys will be boys, uh, Chris Farley's cousin and Elon uh, sat down and talked about docking and decided it wasn't what they wanted to do. Some people are into that. Um, the problem with the magic dock is it is extra cost. It is extra complication. It is extra hassle. Wouldn't it be better to just skip that step completely and just charge? Just have, have a handle that works. It's a neat system, but again, complicated for no reason. So here's what Tesla gets out of it. In addition to saving money over here, not having to put these docks in around the entire country. They also get data because remember Ford wants to keep their data and yes, you can have it. You can, we will provide you with a real time copy of the data, but if you think they're not going to have access to it as well, that's crazy because if you're not paying, you're not the customer, 
You're the product. So if Ford's not paying to be part of this, they're not the customer. They're the product. Now in the poll here, let's take a look at this. Who will ultimately pay for it? Ford will pony up a little bit. Ford customers will pay extra. Both or neither. The data and value works and add value. Now I think, uh, I think it'll be both. I think Ford will pay a little bit, especially to add things like pull-through chargers, which are more beneficial to Lightning today. Ford customers will definitely pay extra. Non-network Tesla charging is already $12 a month or a little bit higher on the per penny rate. So it already works. The most valuable resource is no longer oil, but, da but data. Mm. But all of the data or one of the datum, it's worth so much more. That's why your Facebook is free. Your Gmail is free. It's worth way more to know than to, than to sell you a product. How much money are we talking about? Well, Ford is planning on 40% electric car sales by 2030. This is globally, and this 40 does represent 100% in Europe where it will be required. Uh, 2035, I think, is when it's required. But I think their 2030 plan is 100% in Europe. So what are we talking? Um, 4 million cars a year? Not all of them would use it. So let's just say it's 4 million in total, cumulatively, or at least 4 million that are actually going to use the network. 4 million times 12 bucks is 48 million a month. Hmm. So like a half billion dollars a year by 2030 in additional supercharger revenue. Because remember, most superchargers are mostly empty most of the time. Holiday weekends are always going to be a bear, but there are ways to mitigate that. And one of the best is by building more chargers in those congested areas. Ah, so it's a little bit of money involved. And remember, the, um, the charger is cheaper to build. This is much cheaper than the big clunky CCS. Sandy tore it apart last year. They didn't say what the what the savings was, but in this article they said, well, let's just say, what if it was 20 bucks a car? That's 20 million a year for a million cars. Ford's planning on making 3 million. That's 60 million, even if it's just 20 bucks a car cheaper. It's probably not 20. It's probably more than that. So we're talking real money by switching to just a plain old better charger. So that's a little bit of a big deal. For those of you uh, in the Northwest, I'm going to be uh, at a meet and greet tomorrow, I guess. I mean, it's more of a EVs and caffeine. Monthly community building, answer EV ownership questions, test rides, and road trip tips at Creed Coffee in Vancouver, Washington. The parking lot next to it. It's uh, great. There's a lot of uh, neat people that show up. It's usually a pretty quiet event. It's hosted by the Southwest uh, Washington Owners Club, which is very much a fledgling organization at this point. Southwest Washington's not that big. And I will also be at this. We were talking about this a little in the pre-show chat. I'm going to Michigan. I'm going to Muskegon. And I know you're saying that's not how it's pronounced. But apparently, according to the city council, for their annual meetup in June each year, it is that how it's pronounced. Um, it's official. It's still spelled the same, but it's Muskegon. And uh, there will be a couple of events surrounding this. There's a top secret event on the 18th and a meet and greet with me on the 14th. That's going to be, boy, I hope someone shows up. That'd be awkward. Oh, so we will get into the Q&A hole here in a minute. Thanks to my patrons, as always. You're the reason I'm able to do this stuff. And there's one more big thing we got to get to, which is the beautiful, beautiful rejected photos that we didn't use. These are the other potential thumbnails. Just beautiful is what they are. Uh, the prompt was <laughs> was uh, Elon Musk and uh, Chris Farley in the style of Tommy Boy. And what we got was inarguably a horror show. Uh, that's too many Farleys is what that is. What kind of car is this? I think Ford might build this car. This is terrifying. I love it. 
I love it. I somebody should build that. This we got a lot of fingers. We got a lot of fingers. Oh look, Peter Griffin's here. That came out good. Oh, I don't know what's going on. Yes, of course. Oh man. The problem is AI is getting so good so quick that these absurd horror shows will soon be a thing of the past, but this is a mess. Oh no, <laughs> that's, I don't know what to make of it. It's beautiful. It's, it's magical. It's got everything I want in a picture and so much less. Oh, I'm going to leave this up while we, uh, well, we go well the there it is, and there you go. If you enjoyed this video, head on over to my second channel, My Tesla Live, where these come out every Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific, and we have a lot of fun. We get active in the chat, we answer questions, and you help me make it an even better story. So I thank you for that. So what did I miss? What did I misunderstand? Stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity-flop.